Welcome everyone to worship on this Sunday the 14th of March 2021. Whether you're from Toberquay, Croakmoor or Ballycastle or even further afield, can we just uh, give you a very warm welcome uh, here to our worship service this morning. And of course it's a very special morning, uh, it's a very special day because it's mother, Mothering Sunday and Mother's Day today. And we want to give thanks to God for our mothers, for the influence that they've been in all of our lives. So if you're a mum, a grandmother, a great-grandmother, or maybe even a great-great-grandmother, we are here to give thanks to God for you and seek his blessing upon you and ourselves as we worship the living God together. A massive congratulations also to Davy and Anne Lockery who have become grandparents again. Uh, their daughter Beth and their son-in-law Patrick have welcomed into the world their newborn baby daughter called Jocelyn. And so a massive congratulations to Beth and Patrick and little baby Jocelyn who's wondering what it's all about at this moment. And to Davy Lockery too and to Anne uh, as they are so excited at the birth and the safe arrival of little Jocelyn. Well, let's just join our hearts together as we focus our hearts on, on the Lord and worshipping him today. Let's pray. Father in heaven, as a mother loves her child, so you love us. We owe our very lives to you. You have watched over us from our birth, tenderly nurturing us and showering us with love. And when we have needed you, you have been there. You have given us strength in times of need, comfort in times of distress, encouragement in times of despair, guidance in times of uncertainty. And whatever we have faced, you have been with us. And for this great truth, we praise and thank you. We have not always appreciated your love, all too often ignoring what you would teach us, disobeying your instructions, taking you for granted and wandering far from your side. Yet through it all, your love has been constant. Gracious God, you care for us more than you care for yourself, sacrificing your all for our sakes, loving us with an unquenchable love you have called us all to be your children. And so for this great truth, we praise and thank you. We give you thanks and praise also for our mothers, who in so many ways have reflected your love and shared the same love you have for us, their love with us. And so, Lord God, as we worship you, the living God, we ask that you would bless all mums, all grandmothers, all great-grandmothers, and even all our great-great-grandmothers. And Lord God, that you would just fill them with joy this day as we, your children and their children, express our love to you and to them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we're going to watch a short video in tribute of mums called An Epic Mums uh, Trailer. This spring... 
only one hero can save her family and prevent disaster. Mom, we're gonna be late for school. I don't think so. Whoa. Experience the phenomenon that critics are calling inspiring. Mom, I can't find number 17. Come on, Billy. Dig deep. A lot of fun. And pure genius. Mom, where's my phone? Table. Keys. Mudroom. Dragon Man. Under the couch between the monkey and the flip-flop. How does she do that? Created by God to demonstrate his love with grace, elegance, and poise. Have you seen my butane torch? Folks, if you've got your Bibles with you, please turn with me to our reading for today from John chapter 1. We're going to read the first 21 verses, quite a long reading, uh, but... It gives us a flavour of where we're going to focus on later on in this, this, these verses uh, in our sermon. Uh, please, can I encourage you to grab your Bible and open them? Uh, because as I mentioned in the midweek in Tober Key, uh, just last week, you know, it's good to get a double dose of God's Word, to read it with our own eyes, take it in through our eyes, but also take it in through our ears at the same time. So we're going to go to this passage from John uh, chapter 3 verses 1 to 21 all about Jesus meeting this man called Nicodemus. So let us hear the word of God. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases, you hear its sound but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You're a teacher of the law, said Jesus. And do you not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen. But still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things. And you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. 
For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world. But people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. Amen. And may God's Spirit bless these words, the words of God himself, to our very lives for the glory, his glory and his glory alone. Now we're going to uh, watch a short video again on the series through Moses and the Exodus this time. And then uh, we're going to worship together with a piece called Behold Our God. When the Israelites left Egypt, the people were overjoyed. They danced and sang as they marched towards their promised land. After many years of slavery, they were now a free nation. They would travel through the wilderness and once again experience God's provision. There in the wilderness during the day, God led them with a huge cloud in the sky. The people could always look up and see it. God's presence was always there. During the night, the cloud turned into a pillar of fire, and the people knew when and where to go. God provided the Israelites with water and food and took care of them. Finally, the people came to the Red Sea, where they stopped for the night. Even though Pharaoh had let the people go, he suddenly changed his mind. Now he sent his entire army to chase them down, Hundreds of chariots and fierce soldiers came rushing after the Israelites. The Egyptian army came closer. When the Israelites saw this, they grew in fear and started complaining to Moses, Why did you bring us out here to die? We were much better off in the land of Egypt. When Moses saw this and heard the complaints of the Israelites, he prayed to the Lord, and the Lord told him exactly what to do. Once again, God's mighty power would be displayed for all to see, and hopefully this time, the Israelites would learn to trust God. God told Moses to stretch out his hands over the mighty sea. A strong wind began to blow that turned the raging sea into a dry land. This created a perfect path for the Israelites to pass through. It was a wonderful thing to behold. The waters piled up on either side, and once again, God delivered the Israelites from the hand of the Egyptians. That entire night, the wind kept blowing. The Israelites, with all their possessions, safely passed through. Right on their tracks were the Egyptian army. Even seeing the wonder God was doing, the Egyptians had no fear and charged right into the sea after the Israelites. When the last of the Israelites passed through the passageway, God told Moses to raise his hands and staff again. This time, the wind stopped blowing, and God swept the Egyptian army into the ocean. The waters covered the passageway, and Pharaoh's entire army drowned. Not one survived. When the Israelites saw what the Lord had done, they worshipped him. They were struck with awe at God's deliverance and decided to put their trust in God and his servant Moses. Their exodus out of Egypt was over, but their wandering in the wilderness would last for many more years.
tremble at his voice all creation rises to rejoice behold our god seated on his throne come let us adore him behold Gracious God, you know what it is to love your children, to watch over them tenderly, anxiously, proudly and constantly. You know what this means, for you have called us your children and you care for each one of us as deeply as a mother cares for her child. So now we pray for those entrusted with the responsibility of motherhood, all those who watch over their children in the same way, with the same feelings and intensity of love. Grant to each one of them your wisdom, your guidance and strength. Lord of love, please hear our prayer and bless all our mothers. 
We pray especially for single mothers, those faced with the challenge of raising a child or children on their own, with no one else to share the demands or the joys of parenthood. Give to them, to each of them, patience, devotion and dedication. We pray for those who have lost their mothers or never even known them, those orphaned as children or given up for adoption at early years, those whose mothers have passed on from this life, all for whom this day brings pain rather than pleasure. Grant for them your comfort, your support, and the assurance of your love always with them. We pray also for those who cannot have children and whose hearts long to give their love just as you love us. Father, draw close to them in their situation and fill them afresh with your strength and your assurance that you love them. We pray finally for those who are separated from their children, those whose children have moved far from home, those who have suffered a miscarriage or been through an abortion, those who have endured the agony of an infant's death, Give to them all your help, your solace and hope for the future because you are the Lord of love and the source of love itself. Gracious God, you understand what mothers face, what they give, what they feel. Accept our thanks for them this day and grant to them your special blessing because you are the Lord of love to whom we turn and so hear our prayer in Jesus name. Amen. Let's worship again uh, before we come to expound God's word to prepare our hearts to receive the seed of God's word as we worship together as the deer pants. As the deer pants for the water so my soul longs after you And you are my brother Even though you 
Welcome back everyone. If you've got your uh, Bibles with you, please turn to that passage from John chapter 3 verses 1 to 21. And you know, I can think of no other, uh, no better way to entitle this address as for God so loved the world. Uh, very simply quoting from uh, verse 16 of the passage that we've read. Do you know if there's one person I think of when it comes to love, and I believe most of us can relate to here, it's got to be the love we have received from our mothers. Do you know it's good, it's right and proper that we celebrate with them and say, thank you, mum, in such a demonstrative and tangible way on this Mothering Sunday. It's good and healthy to for us to express our love to them so that they know that we love them from our hearts. In fact, love wouldn't be love unless it is expressed. Love isn't about you or me. It's all about the object or the person to whom our love is directed. Love is a doing word. Love takes commitment. Love is costly. And I don't mean through financial expense, but it's costly of your time and energy. Mums are amazing. I'm sure you, you'd agree. So thank you. A huge thank you to you all. Uh, uh, to all our mothers, our grandmothers, our great-grandmothers and great-great-grandmothers out there. And if there's one sentence about love in the Bible that generations of Christians were taught to memorise, and recite, it is that for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. It's valuable to have such a succinct uh, distillation of our faith in this one verse. But of course, even so short a verse poses questions that must be faced. For example, what belief is required in order for us to be saved? Secondly, conversely, uh, what would lead to condemnation? What are we meant to understand by God the Father giving of a son in, in such a way? And finally, when can we know that we have or will have eternal life? And so it's important for us to grasp an understanding of this love that comes from God and why we hold so for firmly to Jesus and cling to his cross. God is love. And therefore, God is self-giving. Love is all about giving. And here in this verse, chapter 3, verse 16, we can see that God the Father gave his one and only Son. And the most characteristic way in which that is expressed is when Jesus the Son of Man was lifted up. When he was nailed to and when he was hauled up onto that cross outside the walls of Jerusalem. That is the cue for the Apostle Paul in this writing, uh, in this gospel, to give us a flashback to the time of Moses and this strange account of a bronze serpent being mounted up on top of a pole and placed in front of the people. It, it's a strange passage for Jesus to refer Nicodemus to. Well, strange for us, but it becomes very clear to us why he used it when we realise that Nicodemus was a Pharisee and he knew the Old Testament and particular, particularly the Torah inside out. In fact, he would have memorised the first five books of the Old Testament. Jesus goes on, goes to place, uh, to a place in the book of Numbers where Moses 
erected a snake on a pole as a token of divine deliverance from venomous snakes that were biting God's people. So when the dying Israelites looked up and, and directed their gaze on God and put their trust in him, they were saved from the venom that was poisoning and killing them. It's a strange story, but these snakes were the, the cause of many deaths. And that was interpreted by the people as divine judgment. This judgment was as a result of the Israelites' impatience, which led them to sin and to speak out against God, and not about the battles God had won for them in the past. Remember, God had delivered his people from their enemies, from slavery and suffering in Egypt. He had given them true freedom for the very first time in 600 years. He had provided everything they needed, water from the rock, manna and quail every morning and evening. His presence with them to guide them by a cloud during the day, to give them shelter from the hot sun in the desert and a pillar of fire to guide them and keep them warm at night. Their criticism and, and their turning away from God was as a result of this old Egyptian appetite, the desire of their flesh asserting itself once again in their hearts. Instead of God meeting their need immediately, God first disciplined them until they, and here's the point, they turned back and cried out for help to God. And so Jesus uses this image of the bronze snake raised up to picture his own death on the cross. Jesus became the very thing that was killing us. Jesus became sin, the sacrifice for our sin that turns away the wrath of God and makes us unacceptable to the Father. Remember, when Jesus was on that cross, he cried out as the father turned his face away. My God, my God, father, why have you forsaken me? Jesus became the very thing that was killing us. He took upon himself our sin. And, and so the only way for us to be delivered and saved and healed from our sin is for us to look to Jesus. Jesus is the Son of God. He came down from heaven. He is the serpent Moses wrote about in Numbers chapter 21. Like the serpent, Jesus was lifted high, lifted up, and he died on the cross for the sins of the world. And all, everyone who looks to Jesus by faith, trusting him in what he has done, and what he has done alone will receive eternal life. Our judgment by God is determined right now, in this moment, in this hour, by our response to Jesus. For all who look to him and believe and receive him, as the one who paid the price for their sin, the judgment of God is past tense. It's gone. The father can't and will not deny knowing his son and what he has put into place through his death and resurrection. For the father to deny Jesus would be for him to deny his plan in and through Christ for us. For as verse 17 says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, to condemn you, but to save you and to save the world through him. There is no need for anyone to live a life full of anxiety today because of an uncertain future and destiny, fearful of judgment, worrying that we 
might be rejected and excluded from the kingdom of God by the Father. It doesn't change for those all for all those who look to the Son, who confess their sin and who put their faith in him. Salvation in Christ will never change. It is accepted by the Father because all judgment for sin was laid upon him, Jesus, the Son, the Son of Man. And so the wrath of God was satisfied. Eternal life is not consigned to life after death, folks. It begins here and now. It begins every day in Christ. Wasn't it Jesus himself who said, the kingdom of God is here? We embark in eternal life, life in all its fullness, when we have relationship and are in relationship with Jesus and through him have been born again by the Spirit. And we know we have entered into that relationship with the Father and been born again by the Spirit when we're growing in the likeness of Christ. And by that I mean exp expressing the very same love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, his goodness, his faithfulness, gentleness and self-control that we see in Jesus as we look to him. We know we have entered into that relationship with God and been born again by the Spirit when we look up to the cross of Christ each day and behold his glory. And we can know we have entered into that relationship with God, the Father, and been born again by the Spirit if we stake our lives on the conviction that God the Father so loved the world that he gave his own one and only Son, Jesus Christ, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. In the knowledge, in the knowledge, folks, that God did not send Jesus into the world to condemn the world, to condemn us, but to save us and to save the world through him. And so I want to just encourage you that God's love, God's love is boundless. And each and every day, he wants us to turn to him and to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and receive everything that he has for you as you put your faith in him each day and walk along with Jesus along this narrow path that he has called you and I to follow. Let's pray. Father in heaven, your love is beyond our com comprehension, but even in this passage, these very famous verses, probably the most famous verse in all of scripture, you have imparted to us something of your love and the depth of your love, Lord Jesus, for each one of us. The same love that the Father himself has for us because it was he who sent you. It was his plan that you would come to take upon yourself our punishment and the wrath of God to pay the price so that we could be at one with you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so, Lord God, continue to speak into our hearts. Thank you, Father, for our mothers and the love that we have received, something of the reflection of your love for each one of us. And continue to bless us in the remainder of this day for the glory of your name. Amen. Let's uh, close our service today with this piece entitled, A Song of Love. <laughs> Could end.
never bring I will sing of my redemption And the love I don't deserve How I found my precious Savior When the voice of God I heard Savior